Hello, I'm Joel Leonard. Uh, we're here for another edition of Skill TV. We're here in uh, Euclid, Ohio at the world headquarters of uh, Lincoln Electric. And uh, we're here at the uh, uh, at their welding school and I happen to meet one of their instructors who's also the president of AWS, the American or the Association of Welding uh, Society, is that right? The American Welding Society. American yes. Welding Society. And you are? Victor Matthews. Victor Matthews. Well, thank you, Victor. Uh, uh, you've been in this profession for quite some time, right? Well, I've been here at Lincoln Electric for 45 years. I came right from high school and I went on to college uh, working full-time, school and part-time. And I'm a global customer service specialist in our service department, responsible for all of the Lincoln products worldwide. So you go out and test it, and service it, and uh, well, train it? And whenever there's a problem, I'm the liaison to solve the problem. I bring the resources, whatever's needed, to get the job done. Okay. That's my job, is to bring those resources together. And welding, and that's uh, becoming somewhat of a dying art, isn't it? Uh, but it's more and more important than ever before. It's more important than ever before because at this point in time, we have approximately in the United States 500,000 welders, and their average age is about 55. The average welder is 55 mm -hmm. years old. Right. That's so, average. So that means on the that's at the top of that curve that is, is 55. That means a whole bunch of people are on this side of the curve. That's correct. And by the year 2010, we will be short by 200,000 welders. 200,000 welders in just three years or two years. Now, when you consider uh, the magnitude of the, the welding business as part of the gross uh, domestic product, mm -hmm. it represents about $54 million. $54 billion. $54 billion of production is created. In, for welding. Uh, in manufacturing, mining, and agriculture. And, and the average, we said 200,000 jobs, what is the compensation level from? What's, what's the typical well, range of it? Well, it, that tends to be somewhat regional. In other words, uh, a person in L.A. will get one price for that job. A person in New York will get What's the ballpark in the uh, Entrance level, you're looking at about $40,000 a year. And depending on what level of certification that individual has, it goes up from there quite substantially. We had a young lad graduate from the Auburn Career Center last year, was hired by the uh, Boilermakers, and his starting pay is eighty thousand a year plus benefits. Starting pay. Starting pay, eighty thousand a year. Then we hear kids that they don't want to do this kind of work. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't see it being of any value. And there we are. We're begging for workers, and, and they're, we're paying quite well. Yes, absolutely. And what people make the mistake um, of the, this profession is they think, well, gee, I'm going to get uh, uh, my hands dirty, like you say. But it is an entrance level. It is one of the building blocks for the pyramid of success. Mm -hmm. You get those certifications, and from that, uh, I'll, I'll give you my own example. I started off as a production welder here, got certified, became a lab technician. I'm patented in eight countries. For, right. Patent for the welding process that I invented. I was a plant welding engineer for 12 and a half years until I broke my Achilles tendon, and then they put me in the service department, made me a. a, a what I call a telephone engineer. <laughs> but I could not do that, my present job, if I didn't have the knowledge and the skill under my belt. If you didn't get the hands-on. If I didn't have the hands-on and start building my pyramid with some nice big blocks. And we have told our kids not to get their hands dirty, that these people are lower than, than them, and, and that we really are killing the foundation and the feeder system for well, our whole economy. Part of the problem is that many of uh, the uh, educational institutions rate their counselors on how many people they place in college, yeah. okay? And, and that's all well and good. We need the college graduates, but they also need to be employable when they're done with school. Yeah, and companies are, and, they're saying they've got kids that can think and they can do neat things and they know neat stuff, but they can't do anything. They don't have any discernible skills. That's correct. And, and, and so we, we, we're at a, at a serious crux in our society where where companies need, we got our workers that are walking out the door, we got kids coming in that, that look at the jobs that we need them to do beneath them. And we, where are we going to find them? Where well, do you think we can find the skilled workers? That we right here in the good old U.S. of A. We have the opportunities, we have the resources, we have the people. All we need to do is get these people trained. And change the stigma that and, we, we absolutely, the stigma. Absolutely. Now, think about this. 
welding requires a lot of disciplines in order to bring it together because it is so varied. We need metallurgists, we need electrical engineers, we need mechanical engineers, we need computer programmers mm -hmm. to run robots. Now, if you're going to be an operator of one of the uh, robots, you better know what's going on in that art. You can't take a computer programmer or an engineer and have them run that robot successfully until they know what's going on in the art. And that's the basics of the profession. That's what certification work covers. And that's why we need to have kids come in that are open to doing more than just, uh, uh, they got to be uh, mentally capable of being able to do the work as right. well as being able to handle the optim optimization of the computers and the other things as they get more integrated into the technologies and into the welding. One, one of the uh, role models for me is a dear friend, Ernest LeVert. He worked for Martin Marietta down in uh, Dallas, Texas, uh -huh. Mission Fire Control, and he was a welding engineer for the space station. Now, Ernest uh, was an inner city kid from Cleveland, okay? Went to Max Hayes Trade School, joined the Navy, was a welder in the Navy, got out, went to Ohio State, became a welding engineer. And he has climbed all the way. He is also a past president of the American Welding Society. That's why I say he's been a... How many minister. members in the American Welding Society? We have approximately 54,000 members. And if you need 200,000 new workers, you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you notice I've got short sleeves, that way I don't have to roll them up. I'm ready to go. <laughs>